Okay, hello and uh, welcome to the first Clarity Parents chat. Uh, the topic we are going to discuss today is fostering a positive family environment during stressful time, times. And so we look forward to this engaging conversation with our guest speaker, Dr. Joshua Essery. This talk, and, and I want to welcome everybody and thank you for, for joining us this morning. This talk is a production of Clarity Child Guidance Center with the help and support of our sponsors, the HEB Foundation and USAA. For those of you who may not be familiar with Clarity Child Guidance Center, we are a nonprofit treatment center solely dedicated to helping children three to 17 with their mental health. Clarity is located in the San Antonio Medical Center and provides inpatient and outpatient services to several thousand of children every year. You can read more, of course, about our center at claritycgc.org and about children's mental health and our prevention information on our education website, oninfiveminds.org. Now, before we start, I want to point a few technical details. First, the webinar will end at 11.30, including a 10-minute Q&A at the end. This talk is recorded, so but none of the names uh, of the attendees will show in the recording to pro protect your privacy. That is also why we are not taking live questions. However, if you have questions for Dr. Essary, we invite you to post them in the Q&A space at any time during the talk, and we'll try to answer as many as we can. Please make sure to address your questions to the presenters. Of course, this event is purely educational and is by no means an attempt to provide any counseling online to anyone. Dr. Joshua Essere is joining us from his office, where he is not only, he not only provides counseling uh, to children and families, but is also responsible for the supervision and training of psychology psychology residents at Clarity Child Gannon Center. So, Dr. Essery, welcome. Great Thank to you. you this morning. And I would like to start uh, with a few questions, with the, the first question that's really uh, in the mind of everyone. Uh, but I'd like to know what do you see has happened with families during COVID uh, because of all the stressors that were added during these times? Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, thanks for having me, especially for such an important topic. And, um, you know, COVID has, I think, really um, impacted everybody's sense of safety. And I, I think broadly speaking, safety is the most basic and foundational psychological human need. And so, uh, you know, we have kids who most parents spend a great deal of effort and energy trying to reassure them that they're safe. Um, saying things that are really accurate now, like that there's a virus that, um, you know, that, that, that they or their friends or their parents could get really, really sick and even die from. And so it's really kind of um, contributing to a great deal of just basic fear around safety. In addition, because of uh, all of our desires to take care of our families and take care of our kids, our, our kids have had to face things like there not being basic things available at times during this pandemic at the, at the grocery store. They've had to face things like parents describing to them that it's not safe for them to go out and play with their friends or go out um, maybe and eat at one of their favorite restaurants indoors or, or even return to school. And so the whole issue about just basic safety has um, has really been highlighted by this this virus and in in more standard times I hesitate to say normal but in more standard times it's one of the things that families really focus on is reassuring their kids um, that they're safe and that that they can kind of, kind of have some semblance of health. Another thing that's happened with the virus is um, we all have a certain illusion of stability when times are more standard. And so we can kind of rely on our schedules and our routines. We can rely on our daily structures that kind of support our overall health and, and certainly our kids' mental health. Um, there's usually some semblance of economic stability that many of us can, can sort of um, trust in or, or have at least a sense of. And then lastly, um, there's kind of a, a larger sense of political and societal stability. 
that is just sort of not anything that we really think a lot about consciously. It just is kind of what we expect. Well, as we reflect on basically this past, you know, since March and, and maybe a little bit before, everything that I just said is no longer absolutely guaranteed. And in fact, everything that I just said has been disrupted for most of us. And that has contributed to some of the stress that you mentioned with, with families. Um, and kids have to feel this. Kids see it on the news. Kids hear their, their parents talk about it. And they sense the anxiety and stress in their parents from it. And any time we're out of our schedules or out of our routines, it has a direct impact on our mental health as well. So all, obviously all of this has, has brought about an increased stress for parents. Um, they've got an increased um, responsibility on them uh, to, to not just care for, for themselves and maybe their spouse or their partner, but also to care for their, their family as a, whole, as a whole and respond to the lack of structure and what to do that if their child is you know, not necessarily in school or their daycare has closed. Um, but they're having to do that in an environment where they have decreased support. And I think everybody knows what I'm talking about. The social distancing, unfortunately, for many parents and many families has contributed to a sense of isolation. And social support has a direct impact on our mental health and our ability to cope. And so there's increased stress and there's decreased support for families. Um, and this has, has um, obviously been brought on by the pandemic and has contributed to um, additional stress within couples. Uh, some couples, uh, maybe some listening can understand that they don't always agree on things and they don't always agree on exactly how to respond to this virus and they don't always agree on what to do with their children. Um, and so the, the stress of the environment um, has directly impacted uh, couples as well, which then tends to um, correlate to parenting. Um, so where do you get support when you know you're you're trying to be healthy? You're trying to um, social distance, but you can't really see or or interact with your family, your extended family, in the same way. Your friends, um, your school, or your faith communities um, have to have uh, more distancing. And while um, we all have increased our technology use, kind of like we're doing here today. Uh, it's not the same, and yeah. there's something different about the use, and I don't think we fully understand the impact, but there is certainly, certainly, um, you know, uh, a level of isolation that, that families are experiencing. And this, this kind of leads parents um, into, I think, increased levels of depression and anxiety for themselves. Um, I think parents at times just feel depleted and they, they, they kind of want to give up. It's really hard to spend so much energy trying to, to make a good environment for your kids, trying to, um, to respond to all of the stress of this pandemic while, you know, you don't have some of the support structure that we mentioned earlier. And um, many parents, I think, find a tug to kind of withdraw and just sort of give up um, in response. Right. I think we also see that for some parents, the, the, the feeling is a little bit different in the sense that there's increased anger and there might be an increased um, tendency to express emotion um, and frustration more directly in the home. And we see this uh, evidence through things like increased likelihood of domestic violence and, and, and likelihood of, of increased child abuse. So, so um, yeah, no, that's, that, that's, I mean, that, like you said, there are a lot of things shifting and, and it, so the stress on the on the on the children and then the stress on the parents and the response of the parents seems like you know, they're trying their best but because they have their own uh, stressors and whether it's work changes and it's it's the isolation i mean those are are very very difficult to carry i mean just raising children who have you know, in a normal environment has has its own stressors. so we can imagine what it's like i mean i'm a parent my my kids are out of the house but I know exactly what what you know you're describing. I mean, we've seen an increase in actually the equity of of children uh, who come to us in, during this phase, even though uh, you know there was 
in no school and so on. So can you comment a little bit about you know, what you've seen in terms of the, what the, the children were, were how they were responding and experiencing? Yeah, I think, you know, in, in general terms, the more stress, the more vulnerable kids are, broadly speaking. And so what, what often happens is when kids get under stress, something happens that we call regression. And so they may be functioning uh, at a certain level or doing very well prior to a stressor, but then a stressor comes on and we see their functioning decrease. One basic example most parents can understand is regression and toilet training, for example. But that happens later in childhood too. Maybe you have a child who's generally pretty calm and pretty able to, to manage their emotions, now becoming more tearful, um, maybe more withdrawn, or maybe demonstrating um, kind of more defiance or irritability. It's, it's seen as really a regression of their skills or their abilities due to stress. Another thing that I think we see from a more health-oriented perspe uh, perspective is that there's been really a, um, a stalling of a lot of development for kids. You think about it, they haven't been in school consistently, and so there's a stalling in academic development. Many p parents are concerned about their kids' uh, skills actually regressing, whether you're talking about reading, writing, math, whatever it is. But there's, there's also the reality of their social skills and their social development, um, as well as their emotional uh, ability to, to regulate their emotions and understand feelings that, that all of those sort of normal trajectories of development that are supported by the structures and the routines, going to school, getting out, interacting with other kids that have been removed now. So we see a general stalling and that for many kids, there's even a regression um, of their functioning. And it's important for parents to basically be very attentive because there are those these regressions are not always necessarily externalized, right? So, so a kid can actually internalize and not function as well, but you know, it's harder because of everything else going on to detect, right? That's a really great distinction that, you know, some kids withdraw, some kids hold in their feelings, some kids who are more silent, um, that's actually the, the way that they, um, they're, they're managing or, or responding to the stress. And so their, um, their problems are maybe not going to seem as loud in the environment unless a parent is really attuned and focused in. So, so you mentioned a couple of responses that parents may have that may not always help. So they, there's a depression, you know, the tem tem temptation to, to, to also close down and, and because of depression symptom kind of experience or to have anger and, and, and create also an environment that actually becomes more stressful and difficult for children. Any other type of issue that you see parents respond just instinctively maybe uh, yes. because of the situation? So the likelihood that parents are coping in unhealthy manners is just clear. Um, we, can, we know about the increase in alcohol use, for example. I think that there's a high likelihood of other kinds of addictive behaviors going on within homes. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I mean, it's um, those, those types of coping, while understandable, directly impact parents' um, ability to respond and be attuned to their kids' needs. So let's switch now to, let's, you know, what are the, the, the changes that a parent can, in this busy time, right, uh, what are some essential changes that a, a family can implement to help with this situation? Gotcha. So um, there's, there's one concept to maybe keep in mind, which is parents really set the emotional tone for, for the home. And that tone tends to be set um, by what kids feel from their parents and the way the environment feels not necessarily what their parents do per se, or even what they are saying to the kid. This is more a sense of how our kids experience us within the home and thus how they feel as a result of that. One thing that I think is an analogy that's always helpful is the whole airplane analogy. 
parents have to take care of themselves. The thing the flight attendant tells you is you must put on your own oxygen mask prior to putting on your child's. If you take care of yourself as a, as a parent, you are more likely to be able to set a tone that the kid or your family will feel and it will foster maybe a, a bit more peace and calm in the midst of so much uncertainty. And really what I recommend is that parents focus more on the issue of safety, the issue of reassurance of stability, focus on attachment and nurturing their children, no matter what age, not necessarily so much on their behavior problems, um, you know, or uh, compliance with their children right now. What we see clinically is that if you focus on the things I just mentioned in the relationship, what happens is the behavioral problems decrease anyway, mm -hmm. and everybody feels better. Mm -hmm. Another piece of information or advice that I have for families is to really focus on having a flexible structure and a routine that supports daily living activities like taking showers. I know it may sound funny and basic, but it's easy in a time like this to forget to have our kids in a routine where they're showering, brushing their teeth, and, and preferably doing that at a routine time every day so that they're growing and their ability to kind of do that for themselves depending on their age. But that also we are focusing still on our kids' nutrition and hydration and trying to keep some semblance of a schedule with you know, times that they're eating, making sure they're eating regularly and making sure they're eating things that are good for them. Um, and um, obviously we need to all be moving right now. Exercise has a direct effect on our mental health. Um, it, uh, there, there are chemical changes that go on in our, in our brains that really make us feel good when we get moving. And so the, having some exercise within that structure uh, is really, really important uh, for, for parents and for families right now. Um, I think another thing that is really essential to include is to have a really clear plan for technology. It's easy for parents right now to allow their children to, um, to kind of retreat to screens or to, um, to basically um, use screens to a degree that really is unhealthy. Like I said earlier, we do not fully understand the impact of screens, particularly on a developing child's brain. Um, and, and there needs to really be, I think, some clear parameters. I think the American Academy of Pediatrics recommends two hours or less of screens per day um, and really kind of reinforce that within the schedule so that there's a shift, there's an expectation that we're going to do something else. Another thing that's really essential for families to focus on is play. And play, broadly speaking, um, how is it that you engage your children based on their age and what their interests are and have and share your attention with them in things that they enjoy so that you're doing things together? Um, that's something that supports healthy relationships as well as uh, children's um, mental health. Um, find a way to have social support if you can do it safely um, and have a way that your kids can still get some kind of interaction in a safe way. Um, spend time in nature. Nature has a, a really, really important impact on, um, on our, our um, mental health. And I'll, I'll just say a couple things more broadly. Be gracious to yourself as a parent and to other people, we're all in a difficult time right now. Try to focus on a larger sense of meaning and purpose. And, um, you know, there are some aspects of, of what we're going through that have actually helped us. We've been able to spend more time with our kids. Mm -hmm. um, we've, there are lessons to be learned and to be learned from what we're going through that our kids can then use later in their life to be resilient. Talk to your kids about feelings and about what this is meaning to you and model how it is that they can, they can talk about their feelings and understand what's going on in a healthy way. Um, one thing that you can do in that regard is to, in a daily time, it could be at a dinner, it could be in the morning, or it could be before bedtime, 
sit down with your children and talk about what you're grateful for and what you're thankful for. Talk about what you've noticed that's positive. Kind of like, um, you know, Mr. Rogers talks about find the helpers mm. and po point out where you've seen helpers and where you've seen good go on and ask your children to do the same. Um, another thing that families can do is really find a way to try to give back. This could be by supporting an organization together as a family. It could be by finding a neighbor who might be immunocompromised or otherwise unable to, to get out of their house in the same way that you can. Deliver groceries to them. See if you can help them with their yard. See if you can do things to help others in a way that's safe. Um, and lastly, remember and, and communicate to your kids, this too shall pass. Mm -hmm. This is not permanent. We are in a temporary situation although it is longer than any of us had hoped or wanted. And one day the world will be back to some semblance of normal. We will not be the same, however, and I have hoped that we, will, we can be better from going through this together. Well, you know, that's, a, that's really important, and, and uh, in, indeed, we have to, to keep hope. We've learned so much, really, and a lot of families, as you mentioned, have discovered, and I, I, I did some some surveys on that. Uh, we, we find that families uh, have connected like they've nev never have before. Uh, we also saw that uh, uh, you know sales of uh, board games and and bicycles were skyrocketing, and you couldn't find them, which was a you know, good good thing. So I you know yeah. nature and and doing outdoor and 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 really being proactive. I, you know, that's something as a professional, I've, I've really been very careful about just because I needed to be out and I'm out every day. Uh, yes. I can't miss that time because that's a, that's a very essential, I, I believe. Now, you mentioned something I, I found, you know, as a parent, thinking of my times as, as a young parent, what you know, I found was, was sometimes very difficult is, is this, okay, great. You know, I, I want to stay, you said that, that sense of, Let's keep a very, uh, you know, give that sense of security to our children, right? And so when we, when we blow up or when we get very anxious and consciously, may, maybe even we we, we miss that, miss that. So what what would you say? Is your advice to parents on how they can actually work on themselves, or how can they help themselves in some way to 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 try to, you know, have these these challenges that that can mm -hmm. actually create that tension in, in their children? I'll give just kind of four basics. One is the whole issue of making sure that you as a parent are doing the things in terms of caring for yourself in a basic way, sleep, uh, hygiene, exercise. Those are the basics, good nutrition. You have to make sure that you're doing that. In a, in a more kind of uh, general way, Try to find time that you can intentionally spend for you. It's really difficult right now when so much is required from you as a parent to try to provide structure and some semblance of normalcy for your kids. You can lose time for yourself in that. And so whether it's working together with your partner or your spouse to have time where they're gonna watch the kids and you can get away and, and be alone, um, or do something that you just enjoy and have time to yourself. Um, but that that's really, I think, an important um, thing to help you, you recharge. The other um, kind of thing that's connected to that is this virus and everything that it's impacted, all the ways that it's impacted us psychologically, we can get into a mode as parents where we're doing, but we're not being. And we have to reflect on our own values and be intentional about the way that we want to communicate those to our children. And so I really recommend parents um, kind of connect with whatever it is that helps provide them with meaning and helps provide them with some semblance of purpose for hard times whether that's um, just personal values, whether it's spiritual beliefs, anything that, that is important to, to a parent that, ha that helps them ground themselves and really respond to suffering or hardship, 
those values need to be on your mind. You need to be conscious about them and you need to be intentional about the way that you're living or not living in some ways in line with those, because those really help keep us anchored and rooted when we are um, under uh, so much um, sort of stress and that type of thing. The last thing that I'll say, it's some semblance of what I've said before, but we all live within bubbles. There are some um, families that maybe we are already exposed to for reasons that are uncontrollable. Try to find ways to interact with other adults, not just your kids, not just your family, but other adults in a safe way so that you can get some kind of sense of, of support um, from them. So. Wonderful. Thank you. We have a question here from uh, the chat, and uh, and I encourage everyone here, if you have any questions for Dr. Essary, to please pose them. The question is, um, can you give us some specific recommendations for school counselors? And and, and I think in the school counselors situation, they, they may not see what you're describing among parents, right? So, so it's like, how do we help uh, the school counselor, how can they, they help parents? So the question is, how can school counselors help parents? Right. Okay. Um, you know, I got to be honest, that's a very difficult question. And I'm not, I'm not in the role of providing any kind of services in, in the school. Um, and my understanding is that parents currently are not really allowed into the schools because of the safety precautions. The, I guess the, the one thing that comes to my mind is uh, if there would be some kind of, of educational materials that counselors could send either home through their kids, or I know there's a lot of um, kind of voicemails and things like that going out right now distributing information, but if there could be some kind of communication of educational information about the psychological needs of families during this time of stress and some concrete things, some of which I've talked about today, about what might support children's mental health and, and even parents' mental health. Um, that's the best thing that I can think of right now is really kind of focusing on education and really prevention efforts. Um, I, I think that might have the broadest impact I've said a lot of, of kind of broader categories today, but I think the individual schools will probably know of, of resources near their schools that parents might be able to tap into. So, for example, when I talked about getting in nature, you might suggest as a school counselor that um, that their their families take take their kids on a, a, a hike, for example, or they go to a local greenway um, and either walk or ride a bike or they go to some other setting where where they can they can get into nature in a safe way. So um, education, prevention, and trying to find a way within the structure of the school to communicate to a broad audience. Yeah, thank you. And and by the way, we are we have a couple of articles that touch on this description and this recommendation that uh, you've made here today, Dr. Esri, that uh, we will send out uh, after this uh, after this call uh, and. And I, I think the what, what I've heard from also organizations working closely with schools and, and our experience is that for this time, actually parents have been more attentive and, and connecting with teachers because they needed more support. So think about teachers as being the relay possibly of this information, right? So, so informing teachers about you know this this data and then passing on the articles to uh, to them as or the, uh, the, the information to them as a relay would be a, might be a strategy. So, um, <clears throat> good. We have um, one minute left. Uh, Dr. Esser, do you have a, a closing comment? Um, apart from saying that we're all going to get through this together and trying to remain hopeful and oriented towards growth, um, you know, I think, uh, I think that's that's gonna aid us all the best. And just to remember that while we may feel alone at times in this, we are not alone. We are we are going through this together. So. Wonderful, absolutely. And there's a, a quick comment that came up on the Q&A is that some, some schools have family specialists uh, and they're providing training for parents. So, so again, engaging all the staff in the school. 
the school system is com continues to be a great way to connect with families and help them in, in high need. So thank you, Dr. Essary. Again, yeah. uh, great to be with everybody uh, this morning. And uh, we will send a follow-up email. And we have an upcoming webinar next week, the same day, 11, 11 a.m. Now to talk about how to take care of children who are have a chronic mental health uh, mental illness and are at much higher need and how can families respond to this higher need. So thank you again, everybody. Uh, check us out at uh, claritycgc.org and oneinfiveminds.org, and we will see you next week. Okay.